My name is Dan Bowen, and I am a scientific high-altitude balloon project consultant. And I like to read old historic balloon engineering uh, documentation. Uh, this is one of my favorites from 1947 uh, about controlled altitude free balloons. Uh, these uh, these fly at a steady altitude instead of the traditional weather balloons that uh, rise up and burst and then come right back down. So in the last video, we left off right before section two. So let's take a look, skimming through this paper at interesting tidbits. So again, people want to have a constant altitude possibility. Uh, and before 1947, uh, it had not really been achieved or at least very reliably. Here in 1941, they tried to use a whole cluster, uh, basically a whole bunch of small and large balloons uh, to accomplish this uh, constant altitude goal. However, um, we can see here that their intention was to have some balloons burst after it climbed to a certain altitude uh, and some balloons uh, not set to burst at that altitude. So as a balloon bursts, that would remove some of the force uh, pulling up the whole setup. And as the force pulling up um, is reduced, uh, the climb speed slows down. And eventually if you remove enough lifting balloons, uh, your climb will stop. So in their case, the remainder just balanced the load and the assembly descended slowly due to the loss of lift by the diffusion or leaking of the gas. So it looks like they had a partial success uh, and that's pretty predictable. Uh, amateurs and other people have tried this as well. Uh, you really need to have the ability to counteract that slow descent after you level off. And that, that is what we'll get into later here. Uh, this is a, a traditional uh, technique to try and cheat this system uh, because you can use the temperature change of the helium in the balloons uh, to counteract that sort of drifting down effect. And in this case, uh, the temperature comes from sunlight. So launching just before dawn allows the sun to warm up the remaining balloons uh, just a little to stop that descent and bring them back up a little bit. Um, it's not going to last all day, but at least it's a little boost to increase your time flying. So here, uh, the Japanese balloons the Fugo project uh, was a really neat system where they had paper and silk balloons launched from Japan that uh, they actually hung bombs and sandbags from. And their intent was to bomb North America. So let's see what they say about that. And indeed, they were highly su successful. Um, they flew thousands of these and many of them made it to North America with their altitude control system. Yeah, th so their goal was just to make sure that the balloons didn't fall completely out of the sky. They weren't trying to stay at a precise altitude. So one balloon is paper. Uh, by the way, diffusion is uh, when you have a gas that actually uh, does something like soaking through a barrier. So like you might have water soaking through a fabric uh, and coming out the other side. Um, this actually is helium soaking through the balloon and escaping, which means you're going to lose that lifting force. So the Japanese balloons were spherical, about 30 feet in diameter. And the volume uh, you can just compute with uh, Geometry was uh, 19,000 cubic feet. Let's see, solid ballast. Right. So the uh, solid ballast uh, means 
uh, well, actually, we'll get down to that in the bottom. Prevent the balloons from rupturing. Uh, that when they say they had a gas valve um, that was simply a plate on a spring uh, that sealed an opening. Uh, and when the pressure increased too much, uh, the helium would just push the plate away from the hole and the helium could rush out until the pressure lowered enough that the helium could not push that plate anymore and the spring one uh, pushing the plate back up against the hole sealing the helium back in let's see yeah so sandbags were used 900 pounds jeez i had no idea it was that many pounds so there was 36 sandbags hanging from these balloons see the dropping it's controlled by a barrel switch arrangement which dropped a bag by igniting a fuse when the altitude fell below any one of four different levels between 25,000 and 5,000 feet. A barrel switch. A barrel switch is a really neat little device that uses a metal sealed can that has a flexible side. So um, as you put, for example, if you blew air into it like a balloon, the flexible side would bend outward. And if you let air out of it, it would, it would spring back to flat. And when you seal this thing up, like you, you seal the can so you can't let air in or out, when you reduce the air pressure outside of the can it's just like you were blowing the can up with more air so as the air pressure goes down as the pressure is weaker that side of the can bows outward and air pressure gets weaker or lower continually as you go higher and higher in the out in the atmosphere the air pressure gets lower and lower. And so what that means for this barrel switch is that as you climb higher in a balloon, that metal flexible side of the can will slowly get farther and farther out. It will bend out farther and farther. it will distend as you climb higher. And by simply putting a, a wire contact uh, on the metal of the can and a second wire contact uh, bent and hanging over that curved side, you can choose based on how far away you put the hanging contact from the curved side, you can choose a particular altitude when those, the can and the wire will touch. The bowing side will reach out and connect the electrical circuit with that hanging wire. And by doing that, you can choose to activate something electrical when you hit a certain altitude in your balloon climb. Or you can choose to deactivate something electrical as you're descending down in the atmosphere and the pressure is increasing and the can's side is coming back to flat against the normal can shape. So let's continue on here. Interesting, a delay consisting of a two minute fuse. A fuse, they're actually talking about like a real pyrotechnic burning fuse, like you see in cartoons or fireworks. Um, so the electrical system um, must have basically heated up a little igniter coil uh, that started the fire at the end of the fuse and the fuse burned for two minutes uh, range between successive switches so that after ballast was dropped two minutes would be allowed for the balloon to regain its altitude if it did not regain in this time another bag of ballast would be dropped system was inefficient because of any one of the bags uh, fuses failed uh, no more would drop oh, that's curious sort of like a chain um, 
you know, sort of like dominoes. If, if one of them fails to fall over, you're done. Okay, the second type was similar in general, but slightly larger, made of oiled silk. Therefore, would stand a greater internal pressure, approximately six inches of water. So one of the older standards for measuring uh, air pressure uh, was to quote uh, this number of inches of water or number of inches of mercury. And the way that's uh, actually uh, represented in, in physical form is that you fill a little tube of water, um, you know, and it, it may have to be f many feet high and you you fill the tube and you plug uh, the top end of it. You leave the bottom end open into a bucket and you pull the tube up, say, four feet out of the bucket. So now you have a bucket with a tube sticking straight up and you will see that the water falls down away from the top end of the plugged tube by a certain number of inches. And this represents the air pressure uh, around the bucket. Uh, this is a crude barometer. Uh, so in actuality, uh, this is a measurement of pressure and we can convert that to more scient modern scientific units. So uh, let's, um, let's see if we can use a converter program to uh, figure that out. Let me go to the web and I will just type into Google six inches of water. And we're going to try and convert this to Pascal's. Google may not be able to do that, but it will point us to a website that can. So let's go. Okay, I found a website, metric-conversions.org, and I will type in uh, six inches of water, and that gives us uh, 1,500 pascals. For reference, um, the Project Loon balloons uh, are able to withstand 2,000 to 3,000 pascals, uh, and they are on the order of the same size as the Japanese balloons. Uh, and that makes this pretty impressive. Um, it's very hard to make high pressure balloons. Um, so that's that's pretty nice accomplishment for them. The higher the internal pressure that the balloon can stand, the less gas need be valved under conditions of superheating or altitude fluctuations. Hmm, I didn't know that, or I guess I might've forgotten that. Japanese released many balloons of these types from their islands and estimate five to seven percent of those reached the west coast of the United States. The balloons floated between the surface of the ocean up to 30,000 feet. Uh, those that reached the west coast must have re remained aloft from four to ten days. And you can compute that time that they probably had to stay aloft based on the average winds uh, speed across the Pacific Ocean. The wind speed is different at different altitudes, uh, so that makes the, ca the calculation a little bit complex because uh, you have to figure out how long the balloon will be spending at each altitude where the winds are typically a different speed. For example, near the ground, winds are usually slow, between 5 and 15 miles per hour, uh, but between 28,000 and 38,000 feet, the winds uh, pick up massively, uh, sometimes to over 100 miles per hour. So as they reach the apex of their flight, uh, they would get quite the kick uh, in speed in crossing. And then as they drifted down a few thousand feet or more, uh, they'd slow down. So uh, let's continue. While the altitude maintained was not constant, these balloons were highly successful for the time they remained in the air. And to give you an idea, like the world had never come anywhere close to the complexity and performance of this system that the Japanese created. Um, this was uh, 
like an order of magnitude leap in accomplishment and capability for balloons demonstrated here. So in 1943, uh, a company uh, attempted to obtain constant level balloons, which have floated altitudes up to 15,000 feet. An ordinary 350 gram meteorological balloon. By the way, weather balloons or meteorological balloons are sized uh, by the amount of latex by the amount of rubber uh, that they contain. Uh, they weigh the whole balloon, and that is how you talk about a particular size of balloon. Um, there's a standardized method for making sure the thickness is consistent between uh, all the sizes of balloons. Uh, and because the, the thickness is consistent, uh, you can easily tell what the size of the balloon will be by how much uh, rubber latex um, was used to cover that spherical shape. So 350 grams is not actually a very big meteorological balloon. Uh, that's probably uh, when it's at 15,000 feet, it's probably mm, six feet in diameter. It was used, but its volume was controlled by a non-extensible shroud around it. Not extensible just means uh, basically a fabric bag. Uh, that means uh, that fabric cannot stretch, whereas the latex balloon would stretch without this fabric um, restraining it, just like a net. With this method, a flight at about 5,000 feet was obtained at a fairly constant altitude for about an hour and a half. And that non-extensible non shroud uh, created a super pressure balloon. Let's see, design of controlled altitude balloons. We'll go ahead and wrap this uh, session up uh, and we'll resume uh, number three next time.